while I was looking for an answer to one of my questions, I came across an article on Strike Exchange and after some browsing, I found another article which says that it's a good idea to impose uniform code format for all the developers. Well, even before talking about the code uniformity, uh, the concept of uniform itself is very important and similarly uh, before even getting into the details the beauty of the packing for the package is also very important so exactly this is the central idea of our today's discussion we want to make our code look beautiful and we want uniformity and this brings us to the first part of another lecture on software construction and development. So let's get started. Now to keep the things simple and short, we are going to discuss the purpose and vertical formatting in this part. So we have already talked about the impressive looks and uh, impressing people when they look under the hood is very important because uh, whenever we are working on the code, we have already talked that coding is a social activity. And we, whenever we are working with other people, we, may, we want to make sure that, uh, that the, the code that we are working on looks good and it's, it looks beautiful and uniform whenever someone outside the team or even inside the team looks on at our code. So the first impression should be that the professionals have been at work uh, while looking at the code. So for that matter, the general strategy could be that uh, we should take care that our code is uh, nicely formatted and for that matter, uh, a simple set of rules can be implemented and those set of rules should be consistent throughout the code, throughout the, uh, throughout the project that we are working on. Uh, the team, in fact, the project manager or the higher management should bring all the developers to a single set of formatting rules and those rules must be followed very strictly. Well, one of the strategy to do that is to use some automated tools like uh, IntelliJ IDEA or some other tools in the market which force the developers to automatically uh, follow a set of standards, uh, set of compiler warnings, uh, set of compiler errors. So these are the things which can be somehow enforced to all the developers or uh, or, or any, other, any of the developer who is going to work on uh, the project that our team is working on. By now, uh, the purpose of formatting has been explicitly very clear and that is to beautify the code and, and to communicate it correctly to the audience. Well, as we have already discussed a lot of times that coding is a social activity and in this social activity, code formatting is about communication. So how well you communicate to other people depends upon how well you are going to format your code. And we all know that functionality is very important, but the functionality that is not readable at all is definitely useless. So this is also said that functionality actually changes over time. That means the code is going to change with respect to time. Whereas the style and discipline are the elements of the code which are going to survive for the longer period of time. Whereas the code is the one which is eventually going to change. So the formatting should be there and it should be consistent as it stays for the longer period of time. Now uh, to categorize we have divided uh, the formatting into two types. One is called vertical which is going to be discussed in this part and the second category is called the horizontal aspects. Yeah, horizontal formatting of the code which definitely is going to be discussed in the part coming after this. Uh, with respect to vertical size, um, how big uh, a source file should be, uh, the, the vertical aspects may uh, cover the average file size which is generally uh, said to be not more than 65 lines. Uh, the largest file is about 400 lines and the smallest one is 6 lines. Well, these are few statistics which have been taken through uh, a number of source files and uh, projects. 
uh, for the purpose of this study and uh, it has also been found that uh, the smaller files were usually easier to understand than the larger files and that's very obvious if I have to scroll scroll and scroll through my code I would definitely be lost at one point and will not understand or remember that what was there at the start of this source code file uh, we will discuss the vertical aspects and issues of the code uh, including the newspaper metaphor uh, where the newspapers are usually vertically uh, ordered and they are somehow grouped that vertical formatting has itself some inherent meanings uh, which the reader of the newspaper already know and based on those uh, those pre-understood meanings uh, we can definitely go through a particular newspaper article more quickly as compared to if we did not know that particular rule or convention uh, vertical openness between the concepts uh, vertical density uh, vertical distance and vertical ordering of our source code the newspaper metaphor suggests that the code should be oriented or read vertically just like a simple newspaper article uh, every newspaper article has a headline which tells the story which tells the uh, topic of the article and then the first paragraph gives you the synopsis and that synopsis contains the whole story and as we continue in the downward direction uh, we keep on getting more details and uh, the dates the names the quotes uh, and of course some other minor specifications of that particular article Similarly, a single newspaper may be composed of many articles where some of them are smaller as compared to others and uh, the rest of the articles may be a bit larger. Uh, very few contains as much text as a page can hold and this makes the newspaper usable and readable of course. So if the newspaper were just one long story containing a disorganized cluster of facts, dates, names, uh, then of course we would simply not read it or if we read it uh, that would have been very difficult to understand and comprehend um, that what is going on in the bigger picture. Well similarly the source file should be like a newspaper article. Uh, the name of the source file should be a simple but self-explanatory as we have discussed in the uh, rules related to naming conventions and names of source code files variables and uh, and classes and functions. Uh, the top, topmost part of that source code file should provide the high level concepts and, and general algorithms uh, what, which, which are actually going to be used in that particular file and the detail should increase as we move downward until the end we find the lowest level functions and the details uh, which are part of that particular source code file. And other uh, guideline is related to the vertical openness between the concepts within the source code file. Uh, first of all, all the code is actually read left to right and top to bottom. Well, this is the general convention uh, because it's written in English and we write, uh, in fact, and read English language from left to right and top to bottom. Uh, each line in the code should be representing an expression or a particular clause of the code and when we are grouping the lines so each group of lines must represent or must be uh, discussing or presenting a complete thought. Uh, well those thoughts should be separated from each other with the help of a blank line so after each group we are going to insert a blank line um, after some some groups of our code well for example you have a group of variable declarations and after that group you uh, you have a group of constructors so you definitely are going to uh, separate those groups with the help of a blank line well a uh, very good and a bad example of the vertical openness between the concepts is in front of you for example on the left hand side you can see a muddled code where uh, everything is just mixed up and really unreadable and that's very poorly formatted code whereas on the right hand side you can see how vertically uh, this code is organized in the form of groups and these blank lines uh, after each group can be seen. So we have this package declaration statement and a blank line followed by the import statement followed by another blank line and then uh, the group 
which is the class group starts and in, in, inside this group we again are implementing uh, smaller groups for example I have some simple uh, initializations or, or constant variables in fact constant declarations uh, in a function followed by another function so again I have categorized my code into um, into blocks uh, and my code is following the vertical openness um, with respect to the concepts implemented in the code now where openness is uh, is concerned about separating the concepts with the help of creating few blocks vertically uh, the vertical density implies close association that means it implies to group the things together which are closely associated so the vertical distance the vertical uh, density or vertical grouping should be there uh, between the concepts which are uh, closely associated uh, lines of code that are tightly related should appear vertically dense well in this example uh, you can see very clearly that uh, the comments that are used here are actually making the code less dense and uh, the good example yeah, vertically dense example here uh, which is very obvious can be seen that the code which is more vertically dense uh, it's, it's, it fits in an eye full well without scrolling the code yeah, without looking at the larger vertical size in a smaller space in one eye full I can look at GK this is a class declaration and uh, the data members and of course some uh, properties of the class are declared after that uh, there is a method of the class so vertical density is very important in contrast to vertical openness of the concepts well we can look at it and see that this is a class with two variables uh, or two data members and a method without having to move my head or eyes much well um, in the worst or bad example I really have to look or start reading from the top and keep on moving my eyes till the bottom until I reach at the end of the class additionally one other important concept to be taken care of is the vertical distance between the associated concepts in the code uh, to make the thing simple for example uh, you are declaring a variable which is to be used in a loop for example and the variable is declared at the start of the class whereas the loop appears uh, nearly towards the end of the class now that vertical distance between the variable declaration and the loop with which it was actually associated is very large and, and that must be uh, avoided and that's very much discouraged while you're formatting your code. It says that the concepts that are closely related uh, should be kept vertically close to each other. Well, this rule does not work for concepts that belong in separate files. If I have uh, a variable which is being used in another class or in another file, of course I cannot keep them vertically close uh, but closely related concepts should not be uh, separated into different files unless you have a very good reason well again if you feel like that this concept is very much closely related to something which is in another file then that means that you should not put that code in another file and you should you should you should think again that whether I need to convert that multiple classes yes a couple of classes into a single class or whether I should remain or keep them splitted into two classes avoid forcing the readers to hop around through source files and classes well I, that would be a very poor practice K I have to jump uh, or, or basically move up to the file and then go at the bottom and see that uh, where basically this variable is actually being used yeah for example when a function is being called now I'm scrolling down and down and trying to see that where that function is actually defined well uh, with respect to vertical distance there are few aspects that we need to take care uh, one of them is variable declarations uh, so we should keep the variable declarations to the use of the variable very close to each other so for example I have a local variable here is uh, input stream is 
and I'm using that local variable uh, very quickly in this try block. So the vertical distance is very short and that's something which is actually uh, recommended. Similarly, I'm creating the loop variable here and immediately using that inside the body of the loop. Now, uh, the same thing applies to the instance variables. The, the instance variables on the other hand should be declared at the top of the class. Uh, that's in contrast to what I have told you earlier, uh, because the instance variable should be there at the beginning of the class and, and the reader must know that, okay, fine, these are the data members or, or member variables or instance variables of that particular class. In C++, uh, there is a rule which is called scissors rule. It says that uh, uh, put all the instance variables at the bottom of the class. Well, in contrast to that, what we follow today is the Java which tells to put all the instance variables at the uh, top of the class or at the start of the class. Well, the important thing here is for the instance variables to be declared in a one well-known place, uh, which everybody knows that this is dedicated for the data members of the class. Uh, similarly, the dependent functions, for example, I'm, I'm calling a function and then I'm, I'm defining that function. Uh, you can think of this example here uh, where I have a method called make response and inside that method, I'm calling another method which is named as get page name or default and of course I have a couple of parameters in that. Now that method should be defined immediately after this make response method and this is exactly what we are doing here. This get page name or default is defined immediately after we get a chance to define a new method right after this make response method. So it says that the caller of function should always be above the callee if at all possible. This makes it easy to find the called functions and greatly enhances the readability of the whole module that we are presenting to the reader. Now, another aspect that we can think of while uh, looking for or deciding about the vertical distance between the code is the conceptual affinity. Uh, it's the relativity or the relation between two different things. For example, uh, the affinity might be based on a direct dependence such as one function calling another function. So in that case, the distance between those, the caller and the callee should be very small as we have just discussed in the previous slide. Uh, or a function is using a variable. So that variable, if that is only a local variable to be used inside the function only, uh, should either be declared inside the function and if it is required in other functions or if it is required at some other places, then it should be declared immediately before the function is actually defined. Uh, another a criteria for affinity, conceptual affinity could be that a group of functions which are performing a similar operation. Uh, for example, a function which is used to um, add something to the list and a function which is used to remove something for a list and then another function which is used to append something into the list or be probably uh, some other relative operations which are associated to the list conceptually should be definitely grouped uh, at one place. The vertical distance between them should be very much less. And in the vertical formatting, the last concept or the factor that we should keep in mind is the ordering or the sequencing, uh, which is techni technically called as the vertical ordering. In general, uh, we want function call dependencies to point in the downward direction. So the order or the sequence should be from top to bottom as we have talked in the newspaper metaphor that we get the higher level uh, synopsis or, or the abstract at the start paragraph and then as we move downwards in the article we get more details of the story and, and more specifications and specific facts and figures which happen in that particular article. So a function that is called should be below a function that does the calling. This is what we have actually discussed. Well, uh, in some languages like Pascal, C and C++, uh, it, is, it, is, it is opposite where we say that uh, uh, the functions to be defined or at least declared before they are used. Well, it's opposite here in Java and this is what we are going to follow uh, the convention like we do in Java. As in newspaper articles, the most important concepts come first and the lower level details come to the 
last. So I hope that the vertical aspects of the code formatting were clear enough to you with the examples that we have discussed in this part. Uh, with this we will stop here and discuss about the horizontal formatting in the next part. Yeah.